Welcome to Electron Line. Now here we're going to do something a little bit more challenging. We're going to take this curve where we have z equals 2x squared and rotate it about the z-axis so we end up with a bowl-shaped object that has straight edges on the side and we're trying to find the volume of that object. So we're going to use cylindrical coordinates and we're going to use a triple integral. Now what I'm going to show you also in the future videos is that we can do this particular exercise in many different ways and each time getting the volume and I can then show you that we don't always have to use a triple integral. Sometimes it's convenient, sometimes it's not so convenient, and there are other methods that are better. So it's not always ne necessary to use a triple integral. But let's see what it looks like when we use this particular one. We're going to integrate over the triple integral of dv, and of course in cylindrical coordinates, our dv is r dr d theta dz. Now it all comes down to the limits of integration. For the r, we're going to integrate from here to there, so from the curve to the edge. The edge is 2, but the curve, of course, in the x direction, we'll start with the x direction, is from, from x to the edge of the curve, which is 2, so from x to 2. Then, of course, we realize that x could be written in terms of z, so we'll go ahead and make that transformation. Then we can also integrate over d theta, which is all the way around, so that means that we have an angle of 2 pi. And then finally, we integrate over dz from 0 to the top. And when x is equal to 2 at the edge, z will be equal to 8. So our integrals there will be from 0 to 8. All right, starting with our first integral, we're going to integrate r d r first. So this becomes equal to, we still have the two other integrals left over theta and over z. But r now becomes r squared over 2 evaluated from x from r equals x to r equals 2 and we still have a d theta and a dz left so when we plug in the upper and the lower limits we get the following this is equal to the double integral we have theta and z so this becomes when we plug in the upper limit that's 4 divided by 2 which is 2 minus when plug in the lower limit we get x squared over 2 put parentheses around that and we still have d theta and dz. Now what we should do at this point is we should replace x squared with what x squared is equal to, which is z divided by 2. So we'll go ahead and put z divided by 2 there, and we'll get the following. Or I should, no, I'll take that, yeah, z divided by 2. So this is equal to the double integral over theta and z, and then we get 2 minus. So instead of x squared, we have z divided by 2, n divided by 2, we get minus z divided by 4 times d theta times dz. Now next we can integrate over the angle. That's easy because the angle theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. And so that means that this becomes equal to the single integral over z that will remain. This will just be considered a constant, so this becomes 2 minus z over 4. And then we have dz here, and we end up with theta, because when we integrate d theta, we get theta evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. Now when we integrate that, of course, we end up with 2 pi. When we plug in 0, we get nothing, and so 2 pi goes into the front. So this becomes 2 pi times the integral from z equal 0 to z equals 8. And then we have the quantity 2 minus z over 4 times dz left. Okay, now we can go ahead and integrate that last portion so we get the following. This is equal to 2 pi times, so we have 2 integrated times dz, that becomes 2z minus z squared over 8, and that's going to be evaluated from 0 to 8. So when we plug in the upper limit, we get 2 pi times we get 16 minus, that would be 64 divided by 8, which is 8. So this becomes equal to 2 pi times 8, or this becomes equal to 16, and that's not a very good looking equal sign, 16 pi, which is the volume of that interesting looking bowl. So you can see that using cylindrical ordinates, this is not a very difficult problem, but then in the future videos you'll see that there's some actually easier ways in which you can find the volume, different type of techniques that you can utilize. So again, 
using triple integrals isn't always necessary. It's sometimes convenient, but not always necessary. So we'll see that in the future videos, but this is how you do that with triple integrals.